For years, the Muslim Waqf has claimed the Temple Mount was always Muslim property, but a pamphlet put out by the same Waqf in 1925 was recently discovered telling a very different story. Shalom to Zev Orenstein, a former Arut Sheva radio host, and the man who found the pamphlet. Shalom. So uh, tell us, what exactly is it that you found? The, 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 the Waqf, the, the Muslim Religious Trust, uh, in, in, in the past, going back to the 1920s and 30s, uh, uh, and even uh, in the last few decades, has put out every couple of years uh, what they call a brief guide to the Haram al-Sharif, the, uh, what we know as Harabayit or the Temple Mount. And what is interesting is that in the early editions, uh, for instance, in the editions of uh, 1925 and 1930, it actually uh, makes clear reference to the fact that the sanctity of the Temple Mount comes from uh, the fact that this is where the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple uh, of Solomon, uh, of Shlomo stood, and they also make reference to David HaMelech, uh, having purchased uh, this area and brought uh, sacrifices, uh, which which is very interesting. Not that there's any question that that's the case, but that uh, in the last decade or so, uh, there's been a phenomenon uh, known as temple denial, which has been rampant in the uh, Islamic world, which denies any existence uh, whatsoever of any uh, temple standing on the Temple Mount or any Jewish connection to Jerusalem. And we see here... Uh, going back to their very own uh, guide to the Temple Mount, uh, going back to 1925 and 1930, the fact that they themselves uh, attest the sanctity of the site going back to uh, uh, Jewish history, to the Beit HaMikdash. This seems like a reversal of years of Muslim claims. What kind of impact do you think this will have, first and foremost, on the Muslim public? I don't think it will have any impact on the Muslim public. I, I think that... Uh, uh, the, 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 those who have uh, manipulated uh, truth uh, to serve uh, political and nationalist uh, agendas will, will find a way to uh, uh, explain this one away as well. I don't think the, the impact is so much uh, on the Muslim world. I think the, the, the potential impact uh, could be much greater on the, the Jewish Jewish world as well as the, the general public. Uh, for instance, if, if one goes back to uh, Camp David in 2000 uh, with uh, Arafat uh, saying to, to Bill Clinton, President of the United States at the time, that there were never any temples that existed on the, on the Temple Mount and therefore the Jews should have uh, no rights over, over that area. And, you know, imagine if, if people knew of this document uh, back then in Camp David that they could have said, well, what about this thing that uh, the Muslim Waqf put out uh, yourself in 1925 and 1930, ex explicitly saying that there was uh, the temples that stood there? Uh, I think that, that uh, there are many Jews in the world who, who hear uh, the propaganda that goes out from the Islamic world, and they don't understand that there are people who, who manipulate history, who lie about, who lie about history, and who believe them when, when they might say something about uh, there never being any temples, there's no proof of any temples. And, and I think that this document could maybe help to uh, reach out to, to those people. So are you saying actually that Jews are more affected by Muslim PR than by actual history? I, I, I think it's not just swayed by Muslim propaganda. I think that m most people, uh, Jews, non-Jews in general, are ignorant of, of history. Uh, and also, I think people generally try to give people the benefit of the doubt that if someone says something, uh, you know, you tend to believe them unless you have reason not to. So if, people, if there are lots of, uh, you know, quote-unquote respected figures uh, coming out saying, you know, there's no proof of any temple standing on the Temple Mount, well, there must be some truth to it. Otherwise, how could they go around saying it? Uh, and, and since most people are not aware of, of their history, uh, Jewish history or otherwise, uh, it leaves them vulnerable to be taken in by such, uh, you know, falsehoods and lies. So I think that this type of document, if it, if it gets enough uh, exposure, could help to, to educate the masses and let them know that, in fact, uh, you know, there is uh, Jewish history uh, in Jerusalem, particularly on the Temple Mount where the Temple stood, and, and that uh, I think there's a lesson here, which is that 
we need to know our own history. We can't, uh, we can't, you know, be ignorant of our history because there are those out there who will manipulate our ignorance and lack of knowledge for uh, political gains and, and really to work towards the destruction of uh, the Jewish nation. How did you actually come across this pamphlet? Well, I had actually learned about this pamphlet uh, first in, in Dory Gold's book, The Fight for Jerusalem, which, which came out uh, a few years ago. Uh, and ever since then, I've been, been curious about, about this document, trying to, to find the actual, actual text. In, in Dory Gold's book, he has uh, one page uh, scanned in there. Uh, so ever since then, I, I've been curious trying to find it. And then I happened to, to come across uh, on the Internet, uh, on, one, uh, on one blog, I think it was called uh, Bible Places blog, uh, where they actually made reference to it, and someone uh, had scanned it in. And, you know, sure enough, uh, there it was, the, the edition from, from 1925. Uh, and subsequently, I've actually found that, that if you go to, uh, you know, old bookstores uh, on, on the Internet, you can actually buy a, a physical copy for, for not too much money. So it's actually out there. You just uh, need to know where to look for it. Say thank you so much for joining us and bringing this interesting pamphlet to light. My pleasure.